Welcome viewers to the fifth segment of the seventh lecture for the online series of lectures for the course of differential geometry. We'll begin this segment with uh, the statement of a very important theorem called constant rank level set theorem. Let me state this theorem first and then I'll prove it. But before that, we need this terminology by a neighborhood of a subset A of a manifold. we mean an open set containing the subset A. Let F from the manifold M to the manifold M be a C infinity map of manifolds and C be a point in the target manifold M. If F has constant rank k in a neighborhood of the level set f inverse of c in the domain manifold n then f inverse of c is a regular sub-manifold of n of co-dimension k. k comes from the constant rank k. So this is the statement of constant rank level set theorem. Now, let us prove it. Let P be a point in the level set. By hypothesis, There is a neighborhood of P in N where F has constant rank. K. Okay, because from the hypothesis we know that the level set F inverse C has a neighborhood in which uh, F has constant rank K, and since 
the point P is in this level set, there is of course a neighborhood of this point where F has the same constraint K. Now by theorem three, which we proved in the in the fourth segment, which is the um, um, constant rank theorem for manifolds, we have the that there are um, coordinate chart. u comma phi which in terms of local coordinates is u comma x1 x2 all the way up to xn centered at p in n that is phi of p is equal to the zero vector in the n-dimensional euclidean space and another chart v comma psi which in terms of local coordinates reads v comma y1 y2 all the way up to ym this is a chart in the um the in the target manifold m centered at f of p in m and we know that f of p, since p is in this level set, f of p is c, right? This is c. That is, psi of f of p is equal to the zero vector in the m-dimensional Euclidean space. So this means psi of c is the zero vector in r to the m okay so uh such that from the constant rank theorem for manifolds we have the following um so when we were proving it in the in the last segment we wrote it like this right psi of composed with f composed with phi inverse but uh, you know it was implied that the respective maps in this composition are restricted to their uh, relevant domains okay it was assumed but let me write it explicitly in this case uh, because we have this composition psi composed with f composed with phi inverse okay and um, um, this R1, R2, all the way up to Rn is a point in the set phi of u, right? Phi of u. So uh, this map acts on phi of u. So, but f is in in general. Sorry, I I should have written small f. Okay, f is a from n to m, but this f is acting on u. So f has to be restricted to this open set u. Okay, which we did not do while proving or even stating the constant uh, rank theorem for manifolds, but it's assumed that the respective components in the composition are restricted to the relevant domains. Okay, and psi has to be restricted to f of u, right? And it only makes sense if um, f of u is contained in v so we also want um, f of u to be contained in v okay v comma psi is the chart 
uh, in the target manifold M centered at F of P. Okay, so this, according to the constant rank theorem of manifolds, is R1, R2, all the way up to Rk, right? And the remaining M minus K entries are zero. So there are M minus K many zeros here. Okay, good. Now, let me erase this part here, the statement part. A generic element of psi restricted to f u composed with f restricted to u composed with phi inverse of the zero vector sorry this inverse of course uh, so by inverse i mean of course i mean the pre-image of the zero vector under this map under this map, psi composed with f composed with uh, phi inverse. Okay. A generic element of this, of course, uh, because uh, I want all of them to be zero here. So uh, the pre image is going to be. Uh, an element in phi of u uh, where the first k coordinates are vanishing has k vanishing coordinates So, uh, in other words, 0, 0, 0, and Rk plus 1 all the way up to Rn. So, how many zeros are? Here, k many zeros. So, this is a generic element of this set. Psi restricted to Fu composed with f restricted to u composed with phi inverse inverse of the zero vector okay okay now, um, let me draw a picture. Um, this is uh, U, an open set in the mm, domain manifold n and uh, this is the level set f inverse of c so this bold part is u intersected with the inverse image of c under f okay
and um, phi is the homeomorphism coming from the chart u comma phi and um, this is phi of u in the euclidean space r to the n and this is phi of f inverse of c and this part is phi of u intersected with f inverse of c okay now under the action of f restricted to the open set u we have this open set v inside which is inside which is f of u which is the same as f restricted to u of u okay. and the point c is inside f of u and psi x on v to give an open set in the euclidean space r to the m and here um, psi of c is zero right here it's important that f of u is contained in v okay so this is the picture uh, caption of which is um constant rank level set constant rank level set let me erase this bottom part now about some about a few remarks about the notations in fact f of u makes sense as u is a subset of n right although f composed with phi inverse does not make sense why because the domain of f is n the manifold n itself as domain of f is equal to n and codomain of phi inverse is phi of u no codomain of phi inverse is just u okay domain of phi inverse is phi of u and the codomain of phi inverse is u so that domain of f is not equal to the codomain of phi inverse okay and hence we need the restriction so f restricted to u composed with phi inverse makes sense ok 
Okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, what else? Now, phi of u intersected with, so I'm writing this phi inter, of u intersected with inverse image of c under f is equal to phi of the inverse image of c under f restricted to u. Okay. And this is equal to phi of f restricted to u inverse and we know that psi c c is we can write c as psi restricted to f of u inverse of the zero vector in r to the m okay now this is nothing but psi restricted to f of u composed with f restricted to u composed with phi inverse inverse by inverse i mean of course the pre image of uh, of this zero vector in r to the m under this map whatever we have inside this uh, bracket psi restricted to f of u composed with f restricted to u composed with phi inverse okay from elementary set theorem we can write it this is equation number 13 and uh, here again a note psi restricted to f of u composed with f restricted to u composed with phi inverse makes sense as the codomain of phi inverse is equal to u is equal to domain of u um, f restricted to u and codomain of f restricted to u is equal to f of u is equal to the domain of psi restricted to f of u okay so that this guy is perfectly sensible all right now uh, hence the image of the set u intersected with f inverse of c under phi that we have computed here is the zero level set psi composed with f of psi restricted to f of u composed with f restricted to u composed with phi inverse inverse of the zero vector
one therefore obtains that obtains that a generic element of of this set phi of u intersected with f inverse of c has the first k coordinate functions vanishing Why? Because we have seen earlier that a generic element of this set is such that its first k coordinate functions are vanishing. Now we have seen that this zero level set is the same as the image of this set under phi. So a generic element of this set has also its first k coordinate functions vanishing. Now Recall that u comma x1, x2 all the way up to xn, which is the chart u comma phi, is centered at p in n, where these coordinate functions in terms of the um, standard Euclidean coordinate functions can be written as Ri composed with phi with i belonging to this set 1 to all the way up to n since r1 r2 all the way up up to rk vanishes on on this set phi of u intersected with f inverse of c on u intersected with f inverse of c phi is given by the vanishing of the first k coordinates coordinates that is x1 is equal to r1 composed with phi is equal to zero all the way up to xk is equal to rk composed with phi is equal to zero okay on the other hand If Q belongs to U set minus F inverse of C, then since phi of U intersected with F inverse of C is equal to psi restricted to f of u composed with f restricted to u composed with phi inverse inverse of the zero vector
since this holds phi of q um, is not in this zero level set right psi restricted to f u composed with f restricted to u composed with phi inverse inverse of the zero vector so that not all the first k coordinate functions coordinate functions of phi of q are vanishing because if they were vanishing phi q would have been in the zero level set but since it's not in the zero level set not all the first k coordinate functions are vanishing hence the only points of u where all the first key coordinates are vanishing that is x1 equal to x2 equal to all the way up to xk is equal to 0 all such all such points all belong to the subset u intersected with f inverse of c okay. in other words u is an adapted chart adapted chart of the domain manifold n relative to the level set f inverse of c okay since p is in this level set P in this level set was arbitrary this level set is a regular submanifold submanifold of the domain manifold n of co-dimension of co-dimension k okay or in other words it has dimension n minus k this is what we wanted to prove right qvd good now the example of orthogonal group we have dealt with the example of special linear group 
SLN, R. Now we'll study the orthogonal group as a regular submanifold. Example of orthogonal group ON using the constant rec level set theorem. The orthogonal group O of N is defined to be the subgroup of GLNR, which is uh, a manifold of dimension n squared, right? GLNR. So ON is defined to be a subgroup of GLNR consisting of matrices A with A times A transpose is equal to A transpose times A is equal to the identity matrix here in GLNR where i is the n times n identity matrix okay. using the constant rank level set theorem level set theorem prove that O of N is a regular submanifold of GLNR solution. Define this map F from GLNR to itself by F of A, where A is in GLNR, is equal to A transpose A. Okay, it's easy to see that if A is in GLNR, so is A transpose times A then O of N is equal to the inverse image of the identity matrix under F. Because of this relationship, right? Defining relationship. Okay. Now for A B in G L N R, there exists a unique matrix C in G L N R such that B is equal to a C. What is that C? C is A inverse times B. That is that C is that uh, unique matrix. Now denote by L sub C and R sub C, the map from GLNR to itself, the left 
and right multiplication multiplication by C respectively L sub C acting on a matrix B in GLNR is equal to C times B by multiplying B, B with C from the left and R sub C of B is equal to multiplication of B with C from the right. Okay. Now since F of A times C is according to the definition of F, F of A times C is AC transpose AC is equal to C transpose A transpose AC. Okay, and this is equal to C transpose A transpose A is F of A times C. One therefore has F composed with RC acting on A is equal to remember by, by using the composition F of RC acting on A and this is F of multiplying A with C from the right right so therefore we obtain F composed with RC R sub C acting on A is equal to C transpose F of A times C. This is our equation number 14. On the other hand, L sub C transpose composed with R sub C composed with F acting on A is equal to L sub C transpose composed with R C of F of A, right? So this is equal to F of A multiplied with C transpose from the left and the whole thing multiplied with C from the right. This is equation 15. Therefore, F composed with R sub C acting on A is equal to L sub C transpose composed with R sub C composed with F evaluated at A. This is equation number 16. Since this is true for all A in GLNR, for all A in GLNR, F composed with R sub C is equal to L sub C transpose 
composed with R sub C composed with F, right? This identity holds. Now by the chain rule, by the chain rule, F composed with RC, the differential of this map evaluated at A is equal to the differential of the map on the right hand side of 17, L sub C transpose composed with R sub C composed with F star comma A. It's, so this implies so let's start from the right r c star comma a composed with f star comma r c r sub c acting on a which means i have to multiply a with c from the right a c right and on the right side i have let's start from the right for right f star comma a composed with r c r sub c star comma f f of a right what is f of a f of a is by definition a transpose a right composed with l sub c transpose star comma then i have to act r sub c on a transpose a that is a transpose a gets multiplied with c from the right a transpose a gets multiplied with c from the right okay this is equation number 18 Since left and right multiplications, that is LC and RC, uh, L sub C and R sub C, these left and right multiplications are local diffeomorphisms. That is, they are locally um, invertible, differentiable maps. Diffeomorphisms the pertaining differentials pertaining differentials are isomorphisms by remark 1 to proposition 4 in lecture of lecture 6 okay composition with isomorphisms isomorphisms does not change the rank of a linear map which we have seen earlier right does not change the rank of a linear map hence by this equation 18 we see that a rank of f star comma ac is equal to the rank of f star comma a 
right? Since A times C and A are two arbitrary points of G L and R, which means that you know by changing C and A, you can sorry, this is the rank. Okay. By changing A and C, you can establish this equality for any two points in GLNR. No, is it GL? Yeah, in GLNR. Okay, so if you pick up any two points in GLNR, you can write this equality for those two points. So, um, hence the differential, differential F star has constant rank on the whole of GLNR. Then by theorem 4, which we proved a while ago constant rank level set theorem level set theorem the level set f inverse of i okay which is equal to o of n is a regular submanifold is a regular submanifold of GLN comma R QED. Okay. All right. I think it's a good time to take a break. So, in the last segment of the seventh lecture, we'll be discussing the immersion and submersion theorems and their uh, consequences, along with some worked out examples. Thank you for attending this uh, fifth segment of the seventh lecture.